May God bless you. Thank you for inviting us into your homes. My name is Chris Allen. I pastor the church or the flock of Jesus Christ here at First United Methodist Church in Forty, Texas. Today, we will worship, we will praise God, we will pray, we will read from and we will proclaim the Word of God. In returning and rest you shall be saved, in quietness and in trust shall be your strength. Please join in singing our opening hymn, number 368, My Hope is Built. Spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, both apostolic and universal, whose historic faith let us now proclaim. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Good morning. A question for you. Do you know what it means to worry about something? You've probably heard that word a lot lately. People are worried. Um, you know, adults are worried about what you can and can't buy at the grocery store, or they're worried about when you'll go back to school and when they'll go back to work. They're worried. And worry means to think about something over and over and over again and not trust God that he will take care of it or take care of us. Did you know that Jesus talks about worry in the Bible? He does. In the New Testament, in Matthew 6, 25 through 34, Jesus talks um, to his disciples and he's telling them, he said, don't worry about what you're going to eat and don't worry about what you're going to wear. There's more important things than that. He said, think about the birds. The birds, do they have to plant and grow their own crops so that they can have food? No, God takes care of them. 
and you know think about the wildflowers the like the blue bonnets i noticed that they are coming out on um, 80 i saw them yesterday they're coming out the wildflowers do they worry about what they're going to look like if they're a beautiful color if they stand tall enough no god just takes care of them and he's going to take care of us too we don't need to worry so when we think about those birds and we think about those wildflowers and god's taking care of them you know does God take all the food for the birds and just put it in the nest and so they wake up and all their worms and all their bugs are right there in the morning they just get something to eat? No, they have to do their part, right? They have to go find their food. And we have to do the same thing. We have to talk to God. We have to believe in Him. And, you know, we have to work and um, make money and buy our food or grow our food and do our part. And when those things don't happen or something goes wrong, then we have to trust that God will help us and take care of us. And that may be through neighbors or friends or organizations that help us to get food. But God always gives us what we need. Now that's important. Remember Jesus said God gives us what we need. He doesn't give us necessarily what we want. So you may not always have your favorite snack or your favorite food or all the clothes that you want, but you will have what you need. So do you, I need you to remember this week to talk to God, to look to Him, and to do your part, and trust that He will give us what we need. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this day. We're thankful for all the things that you give us. I pray that at this time we remember to focus on you, to do our part, and trust that you will provide what we need. Amen. I texted a friend of mine who is a chaplain at a children's hospital. I asked him how he was doing that I was praying for him. And then I asked the question because I was unsure of the protocol in the face of the COVID-19 virus. I asked him if he was working. And here's what he said, and let me read it to you. We have to, brother. I got a hospital of little guys and gals and their moms and my staff and I'm their shepherd. We're extremely fortunate to be able to work in an essential location so we can keep working. Let us pray today for all the medical and hospital personnel, particularly the chaplains and those who deal with the spiritual matters of life, and especially those who care for the children. Amen. Let us now pray. Let us pray. Bow your heads with me. Almighty God, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, went about doing good and healing all manner of sickness and disease among the people. Continue in our hospitals His gracious work among us, and especially among children. Console and heal the sick. Grant to the physicians, nurses, and assisting staff wisdom and skill, diligence and patience, that they may prosper in their work. O Lord, send down your blessing upon all who serve the suffering. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let us pray for the unemployed. Heavenly Father, we remember before you those who suffer from want and anxiety for a lack of work. Grant the people of this land so to use our public and private wealth that we may all find suitable and fulfilling employment and receive a just reward for our labor through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And finally, for schools and colleges and universities, we pray. Almighty God, by your gift alone, we come to wisdom and true understanding. Look with favor, we pray, for our universities, our colleges and schools especially North Forney High, Forney High, and all of the other schools in Forney, Texas, that knowledge may be increased among us and that wholesome lear learning may flourish and abound. 
Bless those who teach and those who learn, and grant that in humility of heart they may ever look to you, the fountain of all wisdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let us pray that prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Do not be anxious. Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds in the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory, not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. The word of God for the people of God. I've missed seeing your faces. This is a time of uncertainty. None of us really know what tomorrow will bring. We do know we have a strong God, a powerful God, a God who is in all places and at all times, and a God who loves us and cares for us dearly. I have a story to begin with about a grandmother and a young grandson. The story goes that the young grandmother was walking along the beach with her grandson on a bright summer day. And a great wave came up out of the ocean and swept the young boy out to sea. She cried out in her desperation, said, Oh God, save my grandson. All of a sudden, another wave pops up onto the beach and the young boy is right there before the grandmother, right beside her. She looks up to God and she says, he had a hat. We have a great God. He is able to do amazing miracles, especially in times of need. Yet all too often, we, op we focus upon the wrong things. We focus, well, on things instead of God. That is, we focus on, upon hats. Still, I think the real question stirring within us at this time, the gnawing question is, does God care for us? On March 19th, I sent out to some of our parishioners text messages. I was sending out different days, but this one was... Uh, basically just asking, how are you, and uh, saying, God bless you. And one of the gentlemen that I sent the message out to replied to me, thank you. I have been reading from Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. When I heard that and then read that scripture, 
I decided to change my sermon. I changed the scripture that I was going to use because that passage really touched my heart. And I want to thank our parishioner for bringing that to my attention. So, the age-old question is answered in Matthew chapter 25 through verse 34. The age-old question, which I stated before, does God care for us? In verse 25, Jesus says, Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body or what you will put on it. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Yet in challenging times, these words may not seem realistic. Some would say, it's easy for you to say you're a preacher. I promise you, I feel the same feelings you do. I have the same fears that each one of you does. I have kids, a grandson, and I just think of each of you. I, I, I want so much to be in front of you preaching and not, not here, isolated from your faces. In verse 25, Jesus answers the question, does God care for us? Jesus says, look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor weep nor reap nor gather in barns, and yet their heavenly Father feeds them. Are you no more valuable than they, he says? Let us look now at that famous verse, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. In Matthew 6, 33, we read, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. In verse 34, it says, Do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient is the trouble of the day. I sat in the backyard for only a moment, I haven't really had a lot of time lately. I've been very busy trying to do the work of the church and keep in contact with you all. I noticed three pair of dove, six of them in the backyard, going about their business, eating some of the food that I put out and getting fatter and getting ready to nest. They seemed unaware of the troubles that we're facing, for God was taking tender care of them. Remember, Jesus said, are you not more valuable than they? My dad's parents were two of the most faithful people that I have ever known in my life. They were West Texas dryland farmers. Some of you know what a challenge that is. They survived the Dust Bowl during the Great Depression. During this time, they actually traveled to California. It's where a lot of people from the panhandle of Texas and from Oklahoma went. There my grandfather worked on a tomato farm in the Salinas Valley. He said he never saw such a rich place as that. That is, a rich land. God provided for them. And you know, when I would stay with them, it was just always a delight. I remember times around the dinner table. And sitting at the dinner table, I always felt that there was an abundance. There, the farm just provided. Let me remind you the words of Jesus. That God loves you and provides for you. God does care for you. In the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, in the name of God the Holy Spirit, amen.
receive the benediction. May the grace of God, in the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, in the name of God the Holy Spirit, be with you all, both now and forever. Amen.